Hello and welcome to this episode of the REBT Advocates with Dr. Michael R. Adelstein of 3MinuteTherapy.com. You can find his book, 3 Minute Therapy, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life at the REBT.life, link below. And me, Tommy Bateman, I am the Counselor Extraordinaire of Virginia, the Counselor Extraordinaire of Virginia. Uh, you can't email me, but you can email us both at REBTAdvocates at gmail.com. We appreciate all comments and hate. Uh, it's great. It helps us out. So, Michael, we wanted to talk about a, uh, a a common trope within the self-help and psychology world. What's going on? Um, yes, I think this will be an interesting discussion because it's something that I've heard many times and uh, bears closer scrutiny. First, I'd like to uh, introduce myself. I'm Dr. Michael Edelstein. I have 40 years experience helping people with REBT and my practice and three minute therapy book uh, you can find in the descriptions below. Uh, now it's my contention. I think Tommy's on board with this is that mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, as this uh, person Merker thumb, a motivational speaker says, everything that happens happens in the present moment. So I agree with that. And uh, in the sense that when we think about the past or the future, we think about it in the present moment. So we're always going to be, meaning exist, in the present moment, whether we're thinking about the past or the future. So what's the problem then with saying something like this? Uh, uh, it's important to live in the present moment. Um, and what's wrong with saying something like that? Well, it, it, uh, the problem with it, that's a great question, is that really people who say it's important to live in the present moment don't actually mean what they're saying. What they really would like to say, if they were clearer and more articulate, is don't think about what might happen in the future. Don't think about what has happened in the past, because if you do, then you get yourself into emotional trouble by getting anxious about the future, depressed about the past, angry about both. Uh, but that is a very inelegant way to try to deal with anxiety, depression, and anger. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think a lot of times, uh, if that's what they're saying, and I've, I've heard it say before, is living in the moment, living in the present with no consideration for the past or future, which... Uh, I, I don't think is not necessarily true. And you mentioned, you know, don't think about the past or, or the future because it's a means of upsetting yourself, becoming angry or depressed. But is that necessarily true? I often think of the past fondly or I think of unfortunate things that have happened in my past, but I don't have to upset myself about it, nor do I have to worry about the future. But I think planning for the future is usually a, uh, a good idea. So uh, this, uh, it sounds like this, this quote, you know, live in the present and everything that happens, that it happens, happens in the present is kind of tautological. It's a, it's, it's self-evident. Yes, of course. Now what, <laughs> you know, of course we do things in the present. Now what? Uh, I think there's more to be said. Exactly. And uh, you made a good point about if you don't have consideration for the past or the future, and the only way you can have consideration about it is by thinking about the past and the future then you're not going to know what you did wrong so you could do better in the future or what you did right in the past so you can continue doing that in the future. So let's take a specific example to make this a little more concrete. Let's First, you begin with goals. What are your goals? So then you know what you're aiming toward. So let's suppose I want to curb my compulsive eating of candy. So first I think about the past, what has worked in not compulsively eating candy and what uh, could I change in the future in order to avoid the candy. So there I'm squarely put my thinking first in the past and first in the future if I want to improve on this specific behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say in the past I had candy displayed on my dining room table so, well, that didn't work. So I was thinking about the past. Now I know what the problem was. 
And then, so what can I do in the future? I can either have the candy in the closet, so it's not immediately evident, or I could prohibit it in my house. So now I'm thinking about the future. So this clearly indicates that uh, thinking about the past and the future is essential to improve your life. But as Tommy and I have been saying in all these many episodes, don't add musts and shoulds to it. Don't add, I must not eat candy in the future, or I should not have had it out in the past, because that leads to anxiety about the future and depression about screwing up in the past. Yeah. And uh, not only that is I've noticed uh, some people when they hear that uh, start becoming very short term hedonists. They hear must live in the present and then they sometimes tack on. Therefore, I must attain my goal right now of feeling happy right now. So what will make me happy right now? Uh, it will. Will it be some other thing like candy that's right in front of me? Will it be this other uh, uh, form of pleasure uh, that uh uh, that will probably go against any long-term goals I may or may not have had. Uh, um, but Hey, it makes me feel good right now. So uh, sometimes people say living in the present means my goal should be also present focused, uh, which I don't under- necessarily say that's a good idea. Oh, that's great. Tommy, you could say that too many people live in the present too much mm-hmm. because they're, just looking at what makes them feel good right now, as you're saying, and that that uh, can be described as low frustration tolerance, the need in your head to feel good right now. And that will uh, destroy your feeling good in the future because you're not doing any long-term planning or thinking yep. about what's best to do in the future. Yep. Well, I'll let you have the last word, Tom. Sure. That's pretty much what I wanted to say. Well, lastly, I mean, what's a core, I think I wouldn't say crucial or necessary part of REBT, but I think it's very important and it helps define your REBT work is what is your goal in REBT? What is your long-term goal? And in that, in that way, what is it getting rid of your OCD symptoms, working on your borderline personality? Is it working on your eating habits or your relationship? Well, all of those are long-term hedonistic goals or long-term goals to improving your life and having a good time, um, whatever you, whatever your long-term goal is. So REBT expressly, I think, endorses at least thinking about the future, right? That's Yes, exactly, exactly. And the past That's without right. demands, without musts and shoulds, awfuls, terribles, self-condemnation, other condemnation, or convincing yourself life is all bad. Right. We'll wrap it up, Michael. Take it away. Yeah. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks for joining us and uh, doing the technical part here, which you're the expert at. Mm. And uh, so we would like you viewers to comment below. What do you think about living in the past and future? What do you agree with or disagree with about what we said? Questions, put it below. Uh, Suggest subjects. And volunteer, if you'd like to be on with us and discuss something, please let us know. Or if you're a therapist and would like to discuss some problem you're having with a client, uh, come on with us and we'll help you with that. And uh, to help support us, donate to Patreon, subscribe to the REBT Advocates to stay on the rational side of life.